Hello, 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 and praise the Lord. I pray that you all are doing wonderful this morning, this evening, whatever time that you get to watch this. I know I haven't um, been on here to do many encouragement videos um, recently. Um, I have been doing them on Facebook as well as putting them on my blog so that those of you who do not have Facebook or even Periscope, you can go and check those out and see them as well but I will be coming back to YouTube um I'm, I haven't gone I've just been you know having enough time to do the little quick makeup uh videos and all because I can mute the sound the kids are running around they're doing they're talking they're asking me for stuff so it's kind of harder to talk so I have to kind of get up in the morning or the wee hours of the night to do the videos and at night during the evening I do the coaching sessions so I'm trying to get back upstairs get them in and settled um, for bed so you know it's been crazy but you know I'll go back to either getting up you know early or late um, as the Lord places certain things in my spirit now today I want to talk to you all briefly um, about the importance of taking your thoughts captive. This fell in my spirit um, some days ago. And um, yesterday I visited, uh, uh, my husband and I visited a sister in Christ church and he was teaching on spiritual warfare. And one of the things that he was speaking on was, you know, um, taking those things, um, those thoughts captive. And I said, God, you know, this is definitely, you know, confirmation of what you have been placing in my spirit to um, speak to the people of God, not just speak to you. This is something that I had to practice that I still practice that every believer, you know, should practice because even when you're saved, even when you have been delivered from a thing you know those thoughts can you know certain thoughts can you know pop up in your head um certain images will try to pop up in your head and not just sexual it may even be fighting you may be you know have a disagreement with somebody or you know something like that and then you're you know in your mind because of how they did you you just have a vision of you snatching them up by the new growth in the back of their neck like Hattie said <laughs> no but you know that's not even how you know the people of God get down but you know if you've been delivered and you were one that used to pop off and you were one that used to fight you know those thoughts Thoughts, you know could pop up in your head and you know we all know and if you don't know that if you don't think the, uh, if you don't take you know certain thoughts captive and you keep meditating on them and you keep entertaining them and you keep on okay I can't hit you I can't cuss you out I can't have sex you know but I'll just meditate on this thought. I'll just keep thinking about how I would hit you in your mouth. I will think, I will keep thinking about, and I'm being real because some people are struggling with this and they're wondering why they keep coming to test and they keep um, failing them because you may not hit them, but you may be getting smart. You may be, you know, slipping and cussing people out because in your mind, you know, a once renewed mind, you know, get, don't think, you know, that's it. It can't be reset. You know, daily as believers, we have to kill our flesh. We have to detox. We have to make sure we are careful of what we are entertaining, not just on television, not just what we're listening, but even the thoughts that come into our our mind that try to invade our mind that try to come against the will <coughs> the will of God you know so you know if you're entertaining and meditating on those thoughts you know you know I had a thought I had a I had a mind to cuss her out I had a mind you know what I'm saying to do this but I'm saying you know that's why I'm not in agreement with you know some of these inter in Instagram you know posts or you know little memes that have went out saying I'm saved but I'll go off I'm saved you know but I'll pop off and you know I'm saved you know but I love uh, and I love Jesus but you know basically you know don't go there for, for with me because you might get cussed out you might get hurt you and that's the total opposite 
of, you know, what a believer does. You know, a believer is distinctly different. And um, what and how you respond is important because that is the difference that we show, you know, the the world for those around us. This is how we prove um, our responses, prove um, the regeneration, the, the transformation, you know, the change and the renewing of our mind. How we respond shows, you know, that improves. It's one of the reasons, you know, it's one, I mean, it's one of the um um, it's evidence that we have changed because, you know, when you weren't in Christ, your response was, you know, your response was fight, give in to temptation, you know, cuss somebody out. Maybe you didn't cuss, you know, it's self-control, you know, even we can even take it down to, okay, Holy Spirit, even overeating. You said that has nothing to do with God. That has nothing to do, you know, with spiritual things, um, you know, but just like, uh, we did a group coaching session and Tony, you know, we was talking and he said, hey, I feel, you know, convicted and I felt convicted of this, you know, some time ago. You know how you feel and Holy Spirit is leading me, okay? You know, you're constantly like, I need to get in shape. I want to get, you know, in shape, you know, and, you know, it's, I want to, of course, for the natural reasons, I want to look better in my clothes. I want to feel healthy. You know, if you're single, when I have kids and a, and a husband, I want to be able to run around and have fun with them. I want to be able to do these things, you know, and on top of that, you know, I love God. I want to do, you know. Um, be faithful to my, you know, service to him. You know, we preach on, you know, uh, having sex outside of marriage and, you know, we preach on, you know, cursing and, you know, the obvious things, but gluttony and overeating, um, as well, you know, God wants you to be whole. God wants you to be um, in good health. He doesn't want you leaving out of here prematurely for a health condition that you could have taken um, control over. Now, I'm talking about the ones you can take. You can take control over. If you find out something is hereditary or this, that, and the other, you know, we trust God. God is a healer. You know, he will heal you. Put your faith into action. Trust God. Do all the necessary things that the doctors or any advice that nutritionists and all are giving you. Okay, Holy Spirit, um, you know, do those things and watch God. Apply your faith and watch God work. Tony was saying in the group session how, you know, when you show that you're thankful to God, you show him by how you respond. You show him um, that you're thankful by how you treat others. You don't just show God that you're thankful by what you say, but you show God that you are thankful in how you take care of your body. You say, I'm thankful um, to you for how you taking, you know, I'm thankful to you for this body. So therefore I'm going to take care of this body. This is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I have to do works. I have to live, you know, not just for my children, not just for my husband, but I have to fulfill your purpose. I don't want to be hindered in any area of my life and it's not just you know being overweight you know you can be small and in pure and in poor health because you aren't taking you know um um care of your body the way that you should you can be tired you know um you can be um worn out you could be giving you know too much of yourself you know to the point where you're not taking care um of your health it could be draining you know um mentally and physically so you know you want to make sure that you are resting okay god you want to make sure that you are resting you want to make sure that you're putting the right things into your body naturally and spiritually hallelujah okay so you know as far as you know taking those thoughts captive it's important to do that because it is connected to how you um, respond because if you ponder on a thing for too long you begin to do it like I said you might not you might not you know hit someone you might not you know what I'm saying uh, go off, but then you might have this attitude. It might, you know, and, and the enemy in our flesh always deceives us. It makes us feel like we are in control. I can think about these things, but I won't do it just because I watch. 
stuff like that don't mean I'm going to do it. Just because I listen to stuff like that doesn't mean that I'm going to do it. But that's how the enemy tricks us. He is cunning. You know, we are spiritual beings. You know, we eat to survive in our spirit Whatever it eats, you know, is what it's going to intake. You know, um, some people, you know, they, you know, the character flaws can sometimes be a result of what you are entertaining. And that thing will sneak up on you. You think you're good. You might be preaching. You might be teaching, running on with the Lord. But let a situation come where you find out somebody talked about you. Somebody said, you know, something about you. Somebody, you know, you walk into a room and you hear somebody speaking. Somebody call you or send you a text and say, hey, um, such and such was saying this, that, and the other. And when you come in the room and you see that group, you know, that have been talking or exchanging words and said anything, you're not speaking. You're going to go right to your seat. And your mind is, I, they know what they did. And if anybody got a problem, okay, I hear you, Holy Ghost. If anybody got a problem, look, your head rolling, fingers doing the fan, and if anybody has a problem, then they can approach me. Then that's when I'm going to bust out on them and let them know. You know what I'm saying? And that is not the way to go. A person, you know, who has been meditating, whenever things happen to us that you know may cause the flesh, you know, in, 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 in yourself to respond in a different way, you go, you directly go into prayer. You directly go to the word of God because, you do not want to destroy your witness, not just among unbelievers, even among other believers. We have to be examples to other believers as well. You can't look at a person's age and say, or even their position or, on, or even their title, you know, sad to say and say, oh, they have spiritual maturity, you know, maturity. They should know better. They knew better, you know. You, you simply can't look at those things. You can't look at how old, how long they've been in church and what um, and what position they carry in um, in church, you know, because some people just aren't aren't there. And you would think that they are there, but you need to show them how a believer truly responds. Can you still speak? And know that this person don't like you. Know that this person cut you off. Know that this person blocked you. Know that this person say some things about you and see them and truly in your heart continue to pray for them truly in your heart come and see them at the table know what they said hello praise the lord everybody and i don't mean for um being phony because when you go into the presence of god sometimes you're in a you're in a test or on an assignment just to show the fruit of the spirit just to show okay you can change your enemy's mind. You can change your enemy's minds about you. They can. They may have not had an example of a real believer in Christ. They may not had have experienced. They may have been used to being the cycle of being a busybody, of gossiping, of you know not getting along with people, about talking about people. That that's just their life. They're in church. They may have a title. They may not have a title, but they need deliverance, and they think that it's okay to you know act how they still act and oh but I still I still love God but you know I just heard something about you and I just told somebody and hey you know whatever the Holy Spirit I didn't even okay the Holy Spirit just had me me going here because that wasn't even you know what I came on to speak about but hey I go as the Lord leads me to go and um you know they may not you know, have put their flesh under subjection. They may not have, you know, surrendered as men and women of God. Our response to be so weird. And I say weird because it is weird. It is, it is not a worldly thing to do to say hello to someone who has been hating on you. Someone who does not, you know, care for you. I'm not talking about, you know, unless the Lord led you to. You know, I'm not talking about, oh, you come, you know, you come in my house, you spend the night, this, that, and the other. And I know, you know, unless God is putting you, put you on an assignment like that. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, to say hello, to still help, if you hear that they need help, you know, not being, you know, if you hear that they, okay, Holy Spirit, 
with your with your examples. If you hear that someone, you know, is going through a rough time or, or it even falls in your spirit that someone is having a rough time, they need they are they are in need of something, you know, the Holy Spirit may direct you to come to them and tell and that's what you you always want to be in a position where you can still give God. You always want to be in a position where you can um present the Holy Spirit where where you can be used by God to prophetically speak into a person's life to pray for the person that you feel as though you know may have done you wrong or caused an offense because it's not about you it's not about you if if there has been something that's taken place as you know cause one to act up or or to do anything that's you know cause an offense or a rift or or cause trouble in your life you must understand that there is an area to god in their life that they have not submitted to so if you're mature enough you know to go into prayer and talk to God, God will give you a totally different perspective on that situation. And it won't be a struggle. You won't have to put on your game face when you get to church or when you get to work or when you get to wherever you're going to get where these persons are. You're not going to have to put on a front or a mask. You are going to come in your real Holy Ghost. He under my seat. Your, your real Holy Ghost filled bearing the fruits of the Spirit self. Not with a game face, but being the salt and the light of the earth, being the person who is sub totally submitted to God so that when you've prayed and you've talked to God, God has shown you things. God has shown you who you are. So first of all, you're not offended by a, a rumor or a lie, taken back, hurt, you know, or even allowing that demon of rejection, which we're going to talk about on another video as well as I'm going to do a group session for those of uh, those of you who would desire to come into that too but that's that's a whole nother story but anyway you know that demon of rejection that spirit is eating some of the people of God alive and it's attaching to the demon of paranoia when you've been rejected so much when you've been cast down so much when you have been it's a familiar spirit that follows some to where as though they can't even build new relationships relationships they can only be around old people who already in their mind they ain't telling you but I already know she crazy I already know he you know a little he go up in his head she go up in her head you know what I'm saying you have people who are like okay I know that's just how she is you know she'll go off for a little bit but you got people that's not gonna deal with that <laughs> you know what I'm saying they may be saved they may be unsaved it's like okay I'm gonna pray for you you know sis or brother but you know, hey, you going off, you coming out here, you know, accuse me of things that clearly, you know, I didn't do. I wasn't even thinking about you. I wasn't, you know, I love you, you know, not saying it to be smart, but, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know. So, so um, you might, you know, just have those people that are like, hey, um, we know how you are so we're just gonna deal with it you know but you know this type of attitude can <laughs> very well you know keep you from godly connections and you can't see in your mind okay holy spirit you can't see in your mind well if people love me and they care for me they're gonna have to take my attitude they're gonna have to take <laughs> you know how i am you know they're just going to have to receive me, you know, um, how I am. And, you know, even if you're single, my husband, he's just going to have to love me for me. But, you know, as believers in Christ, we acknowledge when there is not something quite right. We acknowledge, you know, the fact that our response needs to be better. We acknowledge the fact that we can't you know, be saved and love the Lord and walk in deliverance and still be nasty and still have our attitude and still um, uh, plot and plan for revenge. You have gotten revenge when you're not speaking. You are, you know, given an eye for an eye, which is how the world does it. Our response is evidence that we are in Christ. When I can still speak to you, when I can clothe you, 
the Lord places something in your spirit about someone that you know, you know, uh, doesn't favor you, fancy you, you know, uh, doesn't really, you know, care for you for whatever the reason may be. And the Lord drops that thing in your spirit or, you know, somebody tells you not knowing, you know, that there is anything going on, you know, between the two of you two and like, oh, such and such is having a hard time, a rough time, you know, their lights are, you know, getting cut off. We don't sit up here and say, mm-hmm, that's because of how she was treating me. That's because of how he was treating me. God, you got him back fast and you let that little, you know, dove come back with that branch and let me know that it's land out there. They got it, baby. No, that is not how we do. This is an opportunity for you to show that you are who you say that you are this is an opportunity to see the growth development and the change this is what a true transformation is i don't know what this new age christian is supposed to be i slap you i love god but i can still cuss i'm sleeping with my man i'm living with him we getting married next month anyway that ain't that ain't god you know what i'm saying god is the same um today <clears throat> yesterday and forevermore you know we are to show the fruit of the spirit you know we need to walk in holiness holiness is a lifestyle it ain't got nothing to do about what color your hair is or what kind of hair you put on your head you know whether or not you got a red lip come on now i'm barefaced because it's in the morning because otherwise i had a good beat on here but i still love god and i still live holy i desire to please god and i look at myself and i say god God, anything that's not like you, I pray that you remove it. Go through and purify my bloodline in the mighty name of Jesus. Cut off and sever anything, every evil work, anything that was attached to the generations before me. Mine says, you got to be real about this thing. You have to want to be delivered. You don't just settle with these imperfections and say, I'm just human. That's how it is. That's how my mama is. That Oh, my nails match this little globe. How cute. Stay focused. See how the enemy? Distractions. Just sort of that, that little ball been here all that time. But anyway, <coughs> God is faithful to do what you ask, even in reference to deliverance. That's why you can't just entertain anything that you want to entertain, put anything that you want to put in your spirit. So, you know, when when you are have been reading, when you have been fasting, which crucifies this flesh, you know, fasting will spill into your natural life. Fasting, you know, it, you're denying your flesh. You're just denying uh, yourself eating, you know, and some, you know, fast from Facebook. That's that's my fast today. I'm going to fast from, you know, fasting is meant to fast from eating. That's their different type of fast where you can do the Daniel fast, you know, <laughs> Where it's only certain type of foods, they're fruit fast, they're all kinds of things like that for those who are on medicines and they're just like, you know, I I, I want to try, you know, something, you know, something safe. There are people who their faith was at a level where they were like, God. I'm going to do this fast and I, you know, I'm trusting you for healing and I need medicine and God is taking them off, but you be led by God, you know, and doing that you seek the face of God and how to do that. But you know, you have to spend time with God when you fast, when you fast, you spend time with God, you talk to him, you pray with him. When you deny food, it will spill into your life because it's hard to deny food. And you know that it's a spiritual thing because whenever you say that you're not going to eat, somebody asks you, do they want to come with lunch? They have all kind of delectables at work. If you're working, somebody invites you out for a dinner. If you, anytime you say you're going to spend time with God, say this is going to, my, going to be my weekend. And I put a pinpoint in that when you hear that, you know, about someone, because everybody's not your enemy. It might have just been a disagreement. An enemy, you, you, an enemy is someone that's like going for the throat, for the juggler, for your life. Some of y'all calling people enemies that just don't speak to you. They just this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? An enemy. Come on now. An enemy is somebody that's going for the juggler. They're plotting. They're make, making strategic plots and plans to destroy your life, your ministry, your family. Like you know what I'm saying? That's Satan. A lot of y'all believers just being petty and not talking to each other. You talking about? Yeah, my enemy. We need to get it together in this new year. We need to unify. We need to unify like never before so we can see the power of God be shown forth. How can, why would the world want to get with someone or something 
You know what I'm saying? That acts just like them and there's no difference. You know, thank God, thank God, thank God for the power of change and the opportunity to renew your mind. Because some of you, God wants to take you some places, but he got to get, he got to gut you out. He got to detox you and get some of, these th some of these things out you because where he's going to send you, some people need to see a difference. Some people need to see somebody that's not going to pop off. Somebody needs to see somebody who's been waiting on God. And even though, yes, they are in the flesh because so many people for so long, even in the house of God, has said, I'm just him. I'm just human, but God is raising up people who say, yeah, it's been 10 years and I ain't had no sex. It's been 10 years and that doesn't make you per perfect because it could be some struggles in some other areas of your life. But what we do when we say no to the enemy and we resist the devil and we cast down all those vain imaginations and we enter and when we entertain things that will um, that will build our spirit man. This enables us to do some of the things that may be humanly impossible. Yes, it's in our flesh and our nature to want to have sex, you know, to, to want to enjoy certain things because we've been born into sin. That's why we are reborn. We are reborn. You know, we are reborn. You know, it's just not, you know, they call the baptism, you know, the liquid grave. That's where you die to self and you get back up. And you say, hey, it's a spiritual thing because you can go down and come back up just the same. It's the renewing of the mind. It's I'm not who I used to be. I'm not going to be who I used to be. I sever, I denounce everything that was attached to my life, every plan the enemy had for me. God, now I'm going back to the original plan you had for my life. I'm not going to settle with an attitude. It may be something my mother had. It may be something that my father, my cousins, you know, something generation where, generational where we just, you know what I'm saying, we will cut you off and, you know, we are prideful, a prideful family, a bitter family. If we don't like somebody, we'll cut them off. We'll feel like, we'll make them feel like they're, they are, you know, don't even exist in the world. You know, we are stubborn. The devil is a lie. You are a new creation. You are a new creature once you were in Christ. And you are now separated from what you once knew, a family. And now you are in the family of Christ. And you have to respond differently because where God wants to see you the people need to see a change they need to see hey I, I, I you know I've been using that excuse I'm human and people you know make mistakes not that we don't make mistakes not that we aren't not perfect but we strive and and if it's already hard enough for thoughts and things to arise in this flesh why give it any more ammunition why add fuel to the fire what we need to do is put those things in our spirit that will help us to respond when tests come, that will help us to stay focused and believe and trust in God when we have been in a period of waiting, to put those things in our spirit that will cause us to, to pay somebody that we know don't, don't like us, even in our family bills. Come on now, you're saying, God save my family, God save my family, but I don't want to, you know... I want you to come and sit by me in church, but if you need help, I'm not going to help you. I ain't got no money like that. You know what I'm saying? She always asking for money. Da, 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 da. God may bless you with the money to give. That may be their way in. The way that God may want to deliver a person is through a disagreement or them treating you badly and you not respond. You continue to sh show love and they just come to you like, you know what? Your response is baffling to me. You came to my aid knowing, you know, what took place and how, you know, I treated you. I thought that you didn't like me. Oh, no, I love, I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But see, if you go behind closed doors and, and behind the scenes talking and tearing, you know, people down, that will hinder you from being in position to do what God needs you to do. And as women, that, that, can, that can be a, a test. That can be, you know, a struggle. When somebody do something to you, you want to send a whole group text. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, sometimes, you, you, you know, it's best to just take it to God. And sometimes you can take it to those who are mature in Christ that aren't going to start acting, you know, crazy towards, you know, the other person and, you know, getting all crazy now. You know, okay, Holy Spirit. Now the whole crew like, mm, 
you know, and then you begin to plant seeds about people, about their ministries, which God definitely doesn't like. That's one of the seven things that he hates is, you know, busybodies, those who cause discord among the brethren. That's why you, when you go through things, you take it to the Lord in prayer. You take it to the Lord in prayer so that you will respond the way that you need to respond and when certain information is taken to you he said blessed are the peacemakers you know even bringing peace you know to other uh, other believers and seeking and looking to unify within the body of Christ and um you know, so if something comes to you, is brought to you, you know, about someone that you know, you know, didn't treat you, you know, too well, but you know, you don't go to them in a prideful way and send them the money and be like, here, I heard about such and such. And even though you talked about me, even though you and Sherelle got on a three-way and talked about me, because, oh yeah, it got, it got back to me. Who wants to receive that? I'd rather get set out. Like, take, take your money. I don't, I don't need nothing from you. And who told her? You know what I'm saying? You are not displaying the love of Christ. If you know it's something that deep, and if you know, oh, this person wouldn't even want to receive, that's how bitter they are. That's how angry. That's how much the spirit inside of them is warring against me. I'm going to give it anonymous, anonymously to this person. Tell them not to tell them that I gave it to them. You know, put in a little, come on now, who are you really doing it for? Are you doing it for God or are you doing it for show or to tell them, you know, and embarrass them? I know your situation and guess what? God still used me. We have to, we have to grow and mature as people of God. And then, and then some of you, you better, well, she ain't going to receive it from me, you know, and she don't want to take it directly from my hand that she ain't getting it. It ain't even about you. Your reward is in heaven. God, do we not understand as believers, God is watching everything you say and everything you do. And when you have that type of mindset, you will be more careful of how you treat people, even the least of them. You will be careful as to what you say. God sees our thoughts. The enemy can't read our thoughts. God knows our thoughts from afar off. That's why I'm like, God, you know, Lord, renew my mind, touch my mind, help my mind, help me to respond in a way that's pleasing to you. Because if you don't respond in a way that's pleasing to God, you know, those of you who truly, oh my goodness, my head is itching so bad. Okay. Yeah, I just scratched up under my wig. But anyway, <laughs> when you desire to love God with all your heart, oof, oof, all your mind, all your strength and do is pleasing, you know, to God, you are constantly, you know, just saying, you know, God, I want to respond the right way. Or if you know that you didn't, God, I really should not have responded that way. And I need to apologize. You know, I need to come out of my, I was wrong about this thing. I was wrong about this person. I was wrong about this situation. I'm not going to let my pride or my ego get in the way. I need to apologize immediately because I don't want for you to come back. And this could be something, you know, that hinder me. You listening to all this new age stuff and all that. The Bible says if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. Do we try to poke around that and, and tap around that and kind of drive around that? I can still get smart with people. I can still talk about you. I can still put my mouth on your ministries. I can still put my mouth on you, not talk to you, not deal with you. And then me and God, we're going to be cool. Where, where, where did you read that? Where did you see that? Why do you feel as though that's okay to not seek to have, um, reconciliation? Oh, I, I forgiven you. I just, I just don't have to tell you that. And I just don't, you know what I'm saying? Because, oh, what if they don't receive me? What if they don't, you know, say, okay, Holy Spirit, what if they, you know, just hang up in my ear or look at my stuff, then I'm gonna be left looking stupid. Did Jesus look stupid on the cross? You know, when he was dying for those that spit on on him that ripped the beard from his face that caused him you know to bleed when they put the stripes on his back it was all for you it looked weak but it was an honorable thing to do he did that for us and we are supposed to carry our cross we are supposed to die daily to to our flesh how do you die when you say sorry when you you didn't even do anything wrong when you when you press and you keep on pushing to reconcile a situation that you have no idea even how it ended up, you know, being this way. When you treat the people who have not treated you so kindly well, you have just died to your flesh. When you resist the devil, 
when you resist those thoughts that the enemy tries to put in your head or that your flesh, you know, when you resist watching a movie that is popular and that everybody's saying, maybe even people in the church are saying, but you're saying this is not conducive for my spirit. I'm looking to see even Mary. That's why it's so important. Don't think, oh, when you're married, I can entertain what I want because, you know, hey, I can go home and have sex so I can release all that, you know, uh, sexual frustration after I've watched it. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? Because it's an open door for lustful, um, lustful thoughts and all that other stuff, which I'm definitely going to talk about. I did a video years ago, Christians over, um, breaking sexual addictions. It's time to do an updated version of that really attacking, really getting into, you know, the spirits, the damage that it causes, you know, even in marriage. That's why it is important in your singleness to be faithful to God, to keep your body and, you know, to not do it for a person, do it because of your relationship with God, because you want to please God, because what you learn in your singleness, you are going to need while you are married, because the enemy doesn't take a break with throwing lustful thoughts or, you know, trying to come at you sideways and slick with the okie doke just because you're married and just because you, you know, have a husband, you get attacked mentally, you know, all kinds of things. So you want to be on guard. You want to be ready for this fight. You think that all the fight is on the outside. There is an inward battle. There is an inward battle that is a mental attack. For those of you who are married, Tony and I are going to do a group session very soon. <laughs> and if you're interested, please email me at the email on the email that I provide below. And we'll, and for however many people, um, because usually I just, you know, go ahead and put it out and I put all this, you know, work and I still save them, but, um, I'll do it, you know, like this sometimes you all let me know when you would like to, um, uh, how many are interested and then we'll set a date, put everything out and then we'll do it. So married couples, if you're interested in a group session with Tony and I, you know, pouring into, um, you all, please just email me at the email, um, below and we'll, you know, just saying I am. And um, I'll have your emails and I can send you all an email because some of you may not be on Facebook and um, settle you know. your mind, settle your spirit, you know, get a relationship with God is so important because, you know, it does all these things for you. Go back to the times. Remember what God has done for you. And I don't mean just as far as, you know, oh, a house, a car. I mean how he saved you, how he set you apart, how he covered you, how he kept you know, some of you alive and, you know, having a relationship with God that you have a hope, you have a hope and an, an insurance and, and, and an assurance. I was going to go into this in another um, video, but you know, some of you all love my long videos that the Lord allows me to have. Some of you go get lunch, go to work, you know what I'm saying? Go back and watch it again. So I love you all and God bless you, you know, for that. But, um, you know, you have a hope. For those of you who have felt like, you know, hey, you know, Nicole, I'm not making that much and my future, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fearful of my future. First of all, fear is not of God, for God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. You have a sound mind, a renewed mind, because there's nothing boring about a believer. It's nothing, you know, you know, no believer should be afraid when you know that God has your future in his hands. I don't care what you are facing. And I'm speaking from experience. I don't care if you have been facing foreclosure. I don't care if you feel like I didn't have a um, a college degree or my credit, you know, it's crazy. It's certain things that I want to do. I'll never have a car. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I'll never get out of this neighborhood. I look to move in a nice neighborhood. I'm looking at houses that I may never live in. Stop speaking like that. You know, when you trust God, and I'm not talking about trusting God for things, you know, because the word of God said the poor will be with us always. But no, I'm not saying that, you know, you're going to be poor and you're not going to have. But for those of you who are, you know, I, I'm working at a janitorial job or, you know, this is all I can get, you know, right now I'm in my 20s. I don't have a car. I'm working like just cleaning up. I should have been so farther ahead in my life. I just kind of played. I just kind of, when you give your life over to God, don't you know that you now are, uh, you are now walking into, um, his plan for your life. So 
you're you're not stuck you don't have to and i'm not saying that you don't build that you don't save that you live like okay i know god got this so i don't have to worry about anything because that's what they think christians you know just live in this kind of furry tale land where god is you know a genie in a lap and we just say hey we want this and that we're lazy and we don't want to do anything and we always want stuff for free the devil is a lie no it's actually not like that god empowers us to make changes and yes because we are in the kingdom of god ambassadors of god kingdom ambassadors and kingdom uh, citizens of God. There are some things, yes, that God absolutely does for us. He will take a person, you know, just like with Joseph. Hey, just like with Joshua. I love the story of Joshua because, you know, I went and then I'm going to be ending. But, um, I think, I hope, I pray. Yes. But, um, I had been, you know, kind of struggling with, and even though I talk and even though, you know, I minister to you all, I just struggled with this. Can I do it? God, and then whenever that would come and proceed out of my mouth because of that time spent with God, Holy Spirit would immediately attack that thought. And, 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 and with the word of God, I would be like, hey, no, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And anyway, I'm not putting any confidence in Nicole or in myself and in or in my ability. I am I am putting all the responsibility on the Holy Spirit to help me to accomplish whatever you set before me. So I trust you, God, to empower me to do whatever comes to me. And I will no longer say what I can't do because I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't want you to see anything that I can do anyway because I can't. I want you to see the power of God at work in me. People think, oh, Nicole, you know, you talk and, you know, God gives you, you know, insight and, and wisdom. Yes, God does. Because other than that, I would have nothing to talk about. Holy Spirit downloads these things. And it's not just for me. I'm not more special or perfect or greater than any of you. A relationship with God will do will will do wonders, <laughs> wonders for you. I'm not afraid of my future. You know, some people, you know, just just wouldn't be able to have been, you know, a stay at home mom. It's like, OK, you know, I um, I don't want to do that because what if he dies? What if something, you know, happens and then how are you going to take care of your kids? How are you this is something that I was led by God to do. My future is secure. I'm not afraid. Tony ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? We have a word because I have a word from the Lord. I have visions from God seeing us doing things. So that's my, you know, can't no cop come past and get him. I'm not fearful of my my husband or my children he under my sick he under my see because that's what the enemy has been trying to do plant fear into the heart and the lives and the minds of people but the people of god need to know that you are safe you are covered under the blood and that's why it's important to play to pray even last night it fell in my spirit to cover my family and pray against the spirit of death. And this is what I've been doing. I'm like, the enemy is relentless. Like I've been praying against premature death. I, and that's, I didn't get fearful. I didn't get scared. I know that my prayers will send up an offering of protection that God will cover us. I, I was praying for the saints of God. I was covering my husband. I say, God, okay, I thank you for him getting home safely tomorrow. I was covering all the kids. I was covering, you know, people in my family, the saints of God, you know, just praying and he's had me praying this prayer. And I'm like, the enemy knows that once he can't get you, you know, to, to just willfully sin it and go back into the things that he wanted you to do, he'll try to do an inside job on your mind. And then, you know, he'll have, you know, uh, it was at times, you know, where the the enemy, you know, or, or thoughts came to me and Tony mine and take pill. And it was just out of nowhere. I've never been suicidal. Not that I'm better than anybody who has, you know, been. But this thought just came while I was pregnant with Connor. Just take all. And then <laughs> what's crazy is we were in a situation where we were in a house. And I told you all this testimony before it was no, you know, heat, no hot water. You know, all these things were going on with this house, but we had nowhere else to go. And I knew what, what kept my mind in that is I knew God had us there. You know, I did not think that God left us and you've been you've been living for God and you saved and, you know, you love God. Why would he allow you? That didn't even enter my mind. What entered my mind, God gave me because during that time I dug into the word of God. I dug into prayer. I, I couldn't I didn't I couldn't fast because I was pregnant, but I, I read his word. I prayed to him. I talked to him and he kept my mind. I said, God, I know you love me. It's no question. You know how you just know some people love you. 
because of all the things they constantly show and prove. He under robo seke under mahaya. They constantly prove their love for you. So it wasn't no doubt in my mind that God ain't loved me and that God had left me and my children and my family. I say, God, I can go through this because you've allowed me to be in this situation because I know, I know that you love me. Because if you didn't love me, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't save me the way that you saved me. Deliver me and clean me up the way that you clean me up just to leave me here and in this situation. We had no other um, uh, income, no other finances coming in. We didn't know how we would even be able to get an apartment. We didn't even know how. We, we had three. We were going to have three kids and we had two older kids as well. So all together. I'm sorry. It's seven of us. Yeah. It's seven of us all together. <laughs> you know, so we didn't even have the money for it. We couldn't get a one bedroom apartment. We didn't even have that money at that time for a two bedroom uh, apartment. And I'm like, look, I'm just going to get a job. He was like, nobody's going to hire you, you know, pregnant like this. And I'm like, all I had was my faith. All I had was, you know, um, all I had was, you know, my trust in God and he kept providing and he kept providing. And someone is in a situation like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, how I'm going to get out this house, how I'm going to get out this neighborhood, how I'm going to get out this situation. And I have these kids, you know what I'm saying? We, uh, I'm single or I'm married and I don't have the money for this. There is always hope. When you renew your mind, God will give you ideas. He will give you a glimpse of your future. He will show you in something that at, the, at, at that point in time in your life, you know you can't afford. For. So what you do, you don't question how you're going to get it. You say, thank you, God, and I'll be obedient to whatever you say. And yes, going back to Joshua, because I kind of, you know, flip flop and got back over there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, that helped me. I did the study of, the, of Joshua because the Holy Spirit would be giving me Joshua generation, generation and I would be speaking on it because he dropped it in my spirit. But I say, God, let me let me check out Joshua. You done told me this and I'm relaying it to the people, but. What's what's special about Joshua? What 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 would put him in a position of leadership? You know the way that he is, and the way that you saying this genera generation is going to lead. And what 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 where did he come? You know what what about Joshua? And I looked that thing up, and Joshua was right in Egypt with everybody else. Joshua was was a slave. He was not taught how to lead. Mm. He was not taught in Egypt how to lead, how to lead men in battle, any of those things. He trusted that God would empower him and give the, uh, him the ability to fight a battle and he'd never fought before. He was not trained. He was not skilled. God told him, okay, God used Moses to tell him, okay, it's time, it's your time. And, jo and Joshua, was, Joshua was what? Obedient. That brought so much perspective and insight into my life. Because I'm like, God, you're just looking for obedience. It's not that I'm so special. It's not that, you know, uh, I do, I'm deserving of anything that you do for me. I'm obedient. It's because I'm obedient. It's because when you when you, when you you give me something that would be considered to someone else a hard thing, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to submit in every area of my life. I don't care how hard it may seem. I don't care what is going on. I don't care. And if, 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 if homelessness was a part of, I don't care what I had to go through for your glory. It may be hard. I may in my flesh not want to do it, but nevertheless, God, your will so, be, <laughs> you know, there is a, you know, a battle within, you know, your mind, you know, thoughts, why it's important and marry people as well that you don't any relationship can go if you know if that's what it is but your relationship with God is the most important even when you are married that's not one that you could just let you know dwindle and 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 just you know fade away and so many people are like you know how do I develop that personal relationship with God before you know I, you know, in this video, and of course, I'm gonna be coming back to y'all more. But I, this was on my heart, this was in my mind. Some things, Holy Spirit, just download it right now, and I pray that it was a blessing to you all. But <clears throat> in a marriage, you know, or someone, you know, courting, but we'll we'll talk about marriage because God does refer um, His love for us in relationship to us as in a marriage. He calls the church the bride, and even if you're a man, you know, it's, it's the bride. He's the groom no perversion type stuff so um yeah 
So, in a relationship, to keep your relationship, you know, on fire, the romance, you know, just everything, you know, your want, your desire, your interest, you know, burning, you have to communicate. You know, you can't go, you know, in and, you know, not speak to each other, not talk to each other for days and, ex and still expect for it to be a great relationship or get complacent or you know, comfortable with the person that you're with. Oh, I'm used to them. We've been married for year, uh, for years. We've been married for 13 years, girl. You know, I come in, he know I'm in here. I don't have to say hello. You just comfortable what you have. You don't appreciate what you have. You know, uh, the flowers stop, you know, you, you know, you both running out to the car. He like, Hey, every man for himself. You know, he got his little thing on his head, you know, your head, your, your, your weave, you know, getting all jacked up and wet. You know what I'm saying? And now you're just used to it. We just trying to get in the car. You don't even want. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, you can get to a place where, you know, after 30 or four, um, you know, 12 or whatever, how many years, you know, some people allow their relationship to get stale because they don't communicate on, they don't do things things, you know, to keep it on uh, that fire, you know, burning. Sometimes you have to step away from everything, um, everyone, even, you know, children, single ladies, stay with me, take note. Um, you know, sometimes you have to just concentrate on one another. Someone I hear you like, well, I ain't looking to be like this within the first year anyway. You know what I'm saying? Or the, you know, think about the years to come and you never know. Some tests can hit you and I'm not speaking anything because I'm speaking health, love, and a very prof uh, um, prosperous marriage where God will use you all greatly in the kingdom. And because of that, the enemy is, is warring and you know, and looking, you know, to break kingdom couples up. Even if you, God, and gave you a prophetic word, you saw his eyebrows, you saw the part on the side of his head, you saw him in the Thames, you saw him up there doing praise and worship. God showed you it's him. It's undeniable. The enemy will still try to fight the fact that God said it. He will still, even at the merge, he will still try. And I don't mean just with, oh, this girl tried to seduce him. I mean, the enemy will try to attack your mind. The enemy will try to attack his mind. I'm telling you, that's why a mind that has been barricaded by the word of God, a mind that has been renewed in Christ will say, boop, devil, you are a liar. Okay? You know, not over here. Take, Don't even take that nowhere else. Go take that to the pit of hell from which it's come. You know, so, but anyway, on that relationship, you know, sometimes you have to go away and you have to single stay with me because I'm talking about God. Okay. Now, um, you have to go away and you have to do things together where it's just you and uh, you, both of you all. You're not on your phones. You're not taking so many pictures that you are missing the moment, the moment that you're in. And that's how you have to do with God. You can be with God. Oh, I've been saved for 10 years. I've been saved for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? How does one stay on fire with God and they've been saved for so long because they don't forget in a relationship, you you sometimes it is it is good for you to go back and think about how you first met. Think about when you were single and desiring to get married. Then think about how he wooed you, how he came, even if it was an unusual situation or it was your situation. And when I say unusual, I don't mean no craziness. I just mean, you know, the way that you met. You may have bumped into each other. God may have spoken to you. He said this, you know, and those things, you know, bring a joy and a light. And it makes you think about how you felt when you first saw him and how you got the butterflies. And it just, it just does something. And that's the way that it is in our relationship with God. Think about when you were bound. Think about when you were entangled in things that was destroying your life. Think about you may got your teeth now. You may be cute now. You may be able to go in your closet and there's a Chanel bag and a couple of Jimmy Choo's. You may not have all that. You know what I'm saying? You may just have your life. You may have your sanity. Some of you were in a psych ward. He kandanabasha, where the enemy tried to take your mind. Some of you didn't even get that far. You were this close, this close to taking pills. You were this close to driving off of a cliff. The enemy told some of you, take your seatbelt off and just end it now. There is no hope. Everything, everything is, and the enemy has done this with so many other people and were successful, but because you've allowed your mind to be renewed because you have allowed you have allowed the hope in Jesus Christ that he has a future that he is an expected end for you the enemy could not prevail the enemy your flesh you know could not send you 
or drive you crazy. Come on now. And that's something to be thankful for God. That's enough to ignite your fire right now. That's enough to praise God right there. That's enough to say, God, forget all these other things. Forget how can you be discouraged. Now I understand for some they've lost loved ones around this time and they, you know, they think about the the thought of they're not here, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I lost my mom. And you know the thoughts will come to my mind, you know, when I first had my son, you know, wow, she's never going to get to meet him. You know, she never got to meet Tony. And when you keep dwelling on those things, you can send yourself into a depression. And even though those things are true, I'm not trying to run away from them and put on this mask and this hard interior. I feel so I can relate, but then tell you about the power of God. Tell you about, tell you about how God saves, how God delivers, how he will set you free, how he will keep your mind to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, you know, and knowing that that she was in a, that she is in, you know, um, a better place, you know, for those of you, you know, who who you're like, Hey, I, I, you know, I might, you know, I'm, I'm not too sure, you know, uh, this person, you know, live this this type of life is it's, it's you can't wreck your brain with those type of things you are alive you are here you have every chance every day to go back to do things the right way to make whatever necessary changes you want to you don't have to wait for a new year to do that you know you don't have to wait until you know months later to change certain habits or, you know, or to even give uh, your life to God or fully surrender into areas you know that you have not surrendered to God in. There is always chance. There is always hope, um, hope for you.